Welcome to AgriAware Farm Walk and Talk 2020. Sustainability is the key topic for this year's Farm Walk and Talk, and improving sustainability on Irish farms is the key topic for the 2021 Leaving Cert Ag Science Syllabus. We'd like to thank UCD Lines for hosting us here today. I would like to welcome you all here to Lines Farm uh, this morning. Unfortunately, because of the precautions around the COVID-19, you cannot be here in person. But we will put all these presentations up on the UCD uh, social media sites and you'll be able to view them from the luxury of your own home. I hope you enjoy these video resources and I look forward to seeing you in the future. I wish you every success in your future prayers. Okay, good morning. So my name is Kevin MacDonald from Crop Science and Biosystems Engineering in UCD. And this morning we're gonna talk a little bit about crop production in Ireland. If we think about crops globally, our three biggest crops, wheat, soybeans and maize, they're worth about 150 billion euros globally. And they feed the entire population, both for humans and animals. So let's think a little bit about the crops that we have here in Ireland. Take, for example, oilseed rape. It's a really, really small crop. It's one of the smallest seed sizes that we have in the cereal world. And that produces a plant that has a bright yellow flower we often see during the summer between May, June and July. And that's a really important flowering crop because that supports the bee pollinies, uh, bee populations. From that seed, we get about 38% oil when we crush it and extract it. And that oil, it's a very highly nutritious oil, so we can use in human nutrition, but it also has a lot of value-added ingredients as well. So it's used in paints, inks, dyes. It's even used in polymers, and it can be used in biodiesel as well. The residue when we extract that oil is a very valuable animal feed. It's a protein feed, and we're, we're short of protein across Europe. So one of the other crops we grow is a really large sized uh, cereal crop, and that's the field beans. And field beans are a really important source because they're non-genetically modified crops. So when we have the issues associated with genetically modified crops in Ireland and across Europe, here's an alternative to it. It's a protein crop that we can grow in Ireland and supply a protein source for us. And it's a really important source across Europe. So a lot of other crops we would grow in Ireland, for example, barley, again, in Ireland, is one of our most important crops. We use that primarily as a feed ingredient, and feed crops across Europe use a lot of barley ingredients within them. The feed market in Europe, a lot of it is driven by the Middle Eastern market. And the Middle Eastern market is driven by the amount of camels that are available in the Middle East. If the camel trade is doing well, there's a big demand on barley. When the camel trade is not doing so well, not so much of a demand for barley. Now in Ireland, we don't have a lot of camels, but we do use our barley for a range of animal feeds, but also we use it for a value-added ingredient, which is for the malting and the brewing industry. And there's a growing international appreciation of the quality of Irish malting barley for the uh, malting industry and particularly for the developing whiskey industry as well. Some of the important other crops that we would have in Ireland would include, for example, oats. So the oats that we grow are both winter and spring oats. And they're a very different structure, a very different fiber, as we can see to our, our other conventional beans and oilseed rape crops. But they're also very important for animal feed. So historically, we would have grown oats for horse feed. And that, again, is an internationally recognized market. But oats are also gluten-free. So anybody who is celiac would be using oats as an important source of ingredients in their diet. And if you have a breakfast cereal where you have oats in it, it's a really slow release of energy, so that keeps you going right to the day, as well as supplying nutrients, vitamins, and minerals to you as well. We're also looking in, in UCD about the relationship between the underground proportion of the plant, the roots, and the above ground biomass. So taking those um, beans that we spoke about earlier, if we pull a bean plant from the soil, we don't get an awful lot of information about the roots and the root structure associated with it. Whereas if we extract a core and we x-ray that core, we'll get a lot more information about the root architecture and how that root architecture can support the development of these crops. So when we look at, at the crops around Europe, a lot of crops do not meet their yield potential. The genetic potential that's there is not reached. And one of the big reasons why they don't reach that is due to not being able to get access to water throughout the growing season. So we're seeing how can we establish crops under different cultivation systems and enable those roots to get down to the water that's there in the ground. Beans have these tiny little nodules on them, which enables them to fix nitrogen from the atmosphere, so they don't need nitrogen when they're growing. The other crops do need nitrogen. And we would use technology, such as the automated and the precision agricultural spreader that we have here. So let's go take a look at the technology that we might use for controlled application rates of fertilizers. So as we mentioned earlier, our crops need different nutrients in different amounts throughout the growing season. 
And one of the technologies that we use to apply that is a precision agricultural spreader like we have here. And what this does is linking it to the global positioning system in the tractor, it knows exactly where in the field it is. We link that to the soil map so we know the types of soils that we have. We're linking that to the crop growth guides that we have. So it will apply and adjust the rate of fertilizer to that exact crop in real time in the field. It can do that from the pre-programmed maps we're using, from the soil maps, or it can do it in real time from camera and sensing technology on the tractor, where it looks at the crop, it measures the amount of leaf material, it measures the normalized vegetative index, and it adjusts the flow of nutrients in real time. So with the optimum amount of fertilizer for the crop in a sustainable manner to ensure that it's just the right amount and no losses to the environment either. Okay. So bearing in mind what we were talking about with that precision agriculture application for nutrients, think about these roots that we were talking about earlier. So we want to optimize how these roots are growing through the soil and how they can get down to that water and get down to that nitrogen that we spoke about. So our cultivation systems are looking about how we would do that. And it's also really important with our cultivation systems. So as we can see here in the case of wheat, we can see the mass of roots that's underneath the soil. It's really important that we protect that because the soil contains about twice as much carbon as we have in the atmosphere. And we have a lot of discussions about our carbon dioxide emissions. So if we can maintain the structure within our soil and maintain a healthy soil, we can keep the carbon levels within that soil. And that's really important for sustainable agriculture going forward. Linked to that structure of root mass within the soil and the subsequent soil structure associated with it is the ability of that soil to hold water. So as we mentioned earlier, a lot of plants run out of water throughout the growing season. If we have a well-structured soil with a healthy biology, that can hold that water within the soil and release it back to the plants throughout the growing season. So these changes in the weather patterns that we're seeing, the really wet weather, this soil can act as a sponge to hold onto that and release it back when, when the plants need it throughout the growing season. So the way we manage our plants is becoming really important to the impact on the soil and soil health and soil biology. So I suppose, in conclusion, plants are a critical part of how we're going to feed the world going forward, both from an animal population point of view, but from a human population point of view as well. They're really valuable from a nutrient point of view, but they have also a role to play in protecting our soils, keeping our soil biology healthy, but also maintaining the carbon balance and indeed the water balance within the soil. So our simple crops that we've looked at previously, they have a huge role to play in our society going forward.